Hey guys, Christine here with Portable Entrepreneur. Today we're going to be talking all about Google's upcoming Core Web Vitals update. So if this is something you're not aware of, or you're not sure how to prepare for it, you need to be paying attention. So this is something that Google told us about back in 2020, and they plan to roll out in May of 2021. Now typically Google doesn't give us this much advanced warning when they're going to roll out an update. On top of that, something that is really interesting that they said is that they are planning to have a visual indicator that highlights pages and search results that have great page experience. So this is definitely something that you need to be paying attention to. And that's exactly what I want to help you with in this video. So specifically what we are going to be looking at is what the core web vital update actually is how it affects you, how to prepare for it. I'm going to share with you some free tools that you can use to measure your core web vitals and recommendations to improve your score. So by the end of this, you are going to be aware of what core web vitals is and the action steps you need to take to be fully prepared. And so you can implement this for your sites and your client sites. So let's go ahead and take a look at what core web vitals actually is. Now the core web vitals update is all about page experience. Now Google said the goal with these updates is to highlight the best experiences and ensure the users can find the information they're looking for. Our goal is ongoing, which is why we plan to incorporate more page experience signals going forward and update them on a yearly basis. So this means that Google plans to make page experience an official ranking factor. So there's going to be a heavy focus on user experience and how that correlates to your rankings. So Core Web Vitals are a set of specific specific factors that Google considers important to a user's overall page experience and will be a part of Google's page experience score. Now there are previously page experience updates that I'm sure you are familiar with. One of those was mobile friendliness, which was all about, can the site be easily navigated on mobile? Then there was safe browsing. Was there any malware on the site? There was a secure update about having an SSL certificate and non-intrusive being any ads or pop-ups or something that contributes to a negative user experience. So now they're adding three more user experience factors that focus focus on page speed. These are loading, making sure that the main content on the page loads really quickly. The second is interactivity. This is about when a user interacts with a page, how quickly once the page loads, can the user start interacting with it, being clicking on a button or clicking on a link, entering their email in a form field, for example, just making sure that the page is quick to respond. And the third is visual stability. This means that the content on the page doesn't start to shift as the page loads because that is really frustrating to the user and can cause them to click where they don't mean to. Now, this is broken down into three specific page speed and user interaction measurements. Largest contentful paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. Now, before your eyes start to gloss over, don't worry, I'm gonna put this into plain English for you so that you know what each of these is, how to check your score, and then how to improve your score for each. So let's start with largest contentful paint, or LCP. Now, this is not to be confused with page speed. This is all about how long it will take the page to load for the user and for them to be able to interact with it. So this is from click, to being able to see the majority of the content. So essentially, this measures the loading performance. Now for a good user experience, Google wants to see LCP occurring within 2.5 seconds of when the page starts to load. And luckily, you can check your LCP score inside Google Page Speed Insight. Now a score of 75% or above is considered passing for all of the metrics that we're gonna be looking at. And you will see these rated and color-coded as good, needs improvement or poor so that you can determine very quickly where you are at here. Now you're also going to see specific recommendations here that Google is going to provide you so you know what to improve in order to improve your score. Now you can also look right inside your Google Search Console account to gain additional information. And I recommend you do this because the data is going to come directly from the Chrome User Experience Report. And here you're going to be able to see LCP data for your entire site instead of just 
just a single page. So you will get a list of URLs and how they are currently performing. Now, these reports are going to give you specific recommendations, but here are some of the things that you can do to improve your score. First, you can make sure that you have better web hosting. By better, I mean faster. Make sure that you have a good host that is gonna help your content load quickly. You can also set up lazy loading images, and this means that your images are only going to load as someone scrolls, so that not all of the images have to load immediately, which is going to lower your LCP score. You can also remove any unnecessary images or if you have excess images that aren't really adding to a page so the page loads faster. Now we all have third party scripts here on the site, but we do wanna make sure that we are keeping those to a minimum and remove any unnecessary third party scripts. We can also look for a large page elements that are found in Google PageSpeed Insights. So any of the large elements that they report, make sure that you are going in and you are fixing those as well because those are hurting your LCP score. And lastly, you can minify CSS. Now next we have first input delay or FID. And this is all about how long it takes for the page to load until a user is able to start interacting with it. This could be selected a menu, clicking a button, putting in their email address, for example. So if you have a site that is very content heavy and there isn't really anything that a user needs to do to interact with the page other than to read and to simply scroll down, well then this isn't going to be as much of a big deal. And you may even find in the site's Google Search Console account that this data isn't even reported for the site and that is okay. Now on the other hand, if the site definitely requires action, the user needs to log in or they need to register or they need to fill out something, for example, then this is absolutely going to be a big deal and needs to be paid attention to. So let's look at a few things that you can do to improve your FID score. One of the biggest things you can do is to minimize JavaScript because it's nearly impossible for users to be able to interact with a page while a browser is loading JavaScript. So that is definitely something to pay attention to. Now we talked about removing unnecessary third-party scripts. We all have them like Google Analytics or adding in a heat map script, for example. So the more you have, the more of a problem this tends to be. We're all gonna have a couple, but if you really start to have a lot, we, we need to cut back on those. Now you can also use the browser cache because this is going to help load the content on the page faster. And lastly, we have the Cumulative Layout Shift, or CLS, and this all refers to visual stability. So remember, we don't want the elements of the page jumping around as the page is loading so that the user has to go and find those elements once the page actually fully loads. So there's a few things that we can do to improve the user experience here. First is that we can add the size attribute dimensions for any media. So if you have any videos, images, infographics, then you can add in the size attribute and make sure the dimensions are there. That way the browser knows what space it needs on the page and that will help keep it in place as the page is loading. Now you can also give any ad elements if you have any advertisements on the site, a reserve space so they don't start to push down content as they load. You can also add UI elements below the fold so that they don't push down the content the user would otherwise expect to remain where it is when they see it as the page is loading. So now that you have a much better understanding of what the Core Web Vitals update actually is, let's make sure that you have an action plan so you can start preparing for this. Now, the very first thing that you want to do is audit your current user page experience. And we talked about a couple of free tools here, one being your Google Search Console account. So make sure that, that you have that set up. If you don't have that set up, check out this tutorial here where I walk you step by step through how to set up that free account. Now also go over to Google's PageSpeed Insights tool and audit your website there. Take a look at what your page score is. Now also make sure that while you are there, you find the largest issues that are causing you to have a lower score and start there. Then come back and run the test again and see how you've improved and work through the largest issues first so that you can get your score to 75% or higher as at least a place 
grades to start so that you have a passing score. Now, the next thing I recommend that you do is to also audit your direct competitors as well. That way you can gauge how you are performing against your competitors to make sure that you are scoring higher than they are. Now, I also want to remind you to not forget all the other SEO signals that are out there. This is just one of nearly hundreds of ranking factors that Google has, although this is going to be a very, very important one for you to pay attention to. Now, overall, you still need to have a great, high quality, relevant content. Otherwise, these page experience signals are not going to be as important for you. You do need to make sure that this is just one part of your overall SEO effort and that you are paying attention to just how important this is going to be so that you can make sure your user page experience is going to result in higher rankings for your sites and your clients as well. I hope that this was really helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments about the Core Web Vitals update, please go ahead and drop those down below and I will respond to you there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.